Hello everybody, and welcome to another virtual summer reading story time. This summer, our theme is Tales and Tales, so we get to read animal stories all summer long. This week we'll be reading about desert animals, which you might already be pretty familiar with. Desert animals are unique because they've adapted to the conditions of the desert. A lot of animals have grown to live with things like cacti that take water into their roots and then survive on that water for a long time. We will actually read about snakes in our first story today, but here's the tricky part. These snakes actually aren't in the desert. These snakes live in the city, and they're going to be building something. Let's see if we can figure it out together in Snakes on the Job by Catherine Dennis. Snakes on the Job by Catherine Dennis. Off to work. The snakes will go. What kind of job do you think the snakes have? Hmm, let's find out. They slide into trucks and roll out slow. Let's look at all the different kinds of vehicles they have. There's a forklift, a crane, a backhoe, a pickup truck and trailer, a bulldozer, a food truck, a dump truck, a front loader, a digger slash excavator, and a delivery truck. Hiss goes the sound of the brakes. A digger clears the way as a bulldozer shoves the dirt to one side. Dump trucks are piled high. Hiss goes the sound of the brakes. A row of delivery trucks keeps snakes moving at a steady pace. A crane lifts large objects and swings them into place. Hiss goes the sound of the brakes. A food truck arrives and the snakes line up for lunch. It looks like today's special are ant tacos. Mmm mmm. Then it's back to work. There's a time crunch. We have to go fast. A front loader rumbles in. Holes are dug and flowers fill wheelbarrows. Hiss goes the sound of the brakes. It takes three snakes to roll a giant wheel into place. I wonder what the snakes are building. Do you know? Snakes work together to reach their goal. Hmm. I wonder if a backhoe is needed to put in posts. The project is coming to a close. Hiss goes the sound of the brakes. It's time to see what the snakes have built. Let's find out together. Are you ready? It's a, it's a playground. Hiss, go the happy snakes. Hamsters ask if they can play. What will the snake say? Welcome. Yes. The end. That story was called Snakes on the Job by Catherine Dennis. Who would have thought that those snakes were building a playground? And I was so glad that they shared at the very end. Our second story is all about how some animals learn to survive in the desert. This story is called Cactus Hotel by Brenda Z. Goyverson and illustrated by Megan Lloyd. Cactus Hotel by Brenda Z. Goyverson. 
illustrated by Megan Lloyd. This book is a very long book. It's nonfiction, which means that everything inside is true or factual. We won't be able to fit the entire book into our story time today, so I'm going to read only parts of it. If you'd like to read the whole thing, feel free to check it out at the library. After many dry days, a heavy rain falls on the desert. Soon, a young cactus sprouts up from the ground. Slowly, slowly the seedling grows. After ten years, the cactus is only four inches high. It is just big enough for desert ants to climb its spiny sides. After a rainstorm, when the desert blooms with color, the cactus pulls in water with its long roots and looks fat. When there is no rain, the cactus uses up the water it has stored inside and looks thin. A jackrabbit cools off beside it and gnaws on the green pulp. But when a coyote moves in the distance, the jackrabbit disappears into a nearby hole. After 50 years, the cactus stands 10 feet tall and looks straight and strong. For the very first time, brilliant white and yellow flowers appear at the top of the cactus. Every spring from now on, the flowers will open for one night only and then close in the heat of the day. The flowers dry up and after a month, the bright red fruit filled with black seeds is ripe and ready. A Gila woodpecker comes to eat. He looks around the cactus and decides to stay. He has found the perfect place in the desert to begin a new hotel. Have you ever thought of a cactus as a hotel before? The woodpecker goes right to work and the only tool he uses is his long, hard beak. Tap, tap, tap. He bores into the flesh of the cactus. Tap, tap, tap. He digs deep inside to make a space that is comfortable and roomy. The cactus isn't harmed. It forms a tough scab all around the hole to protect itself from drying out. The woodpecker gets a weatherproof nest that is shady on hot days and warm and insulated on frosty nights. And the cactus gets something in return. The woodpecker likes to eat the insects that can bring disease to the cactus. After 60 years, the Cactus Hotel is 18 feet tall. To add more space, it begins to grow an arm. Farther up, a white-winged dove makes a nest on the arm, and down below, an old hole is discovered by an elf owl. The birds feel safe, living high up in a prickly plant where nothing can reach them. All around the desert, there are holes of every size for ants and mice, lizards and snakes, rabbits and foxes. After 150 years, there are holes of every size in the cactus, too. The giant plant has finally stopped growing. It is 50 feet tall, with seven long branches. It weighs eight tons, about as much as five automobiles. Five whole cars. That's really heavy. Everybody wants to live in the cactus hotel. Birds lay eggs and pack rats raise their young. Even insects and bats live there. When one animal moves out, another moves in. And every spring they come for a special treat of nectar and juicy red fruit. Finally, after 200 years, the old cactus sways in a gust of wind and falls with a thud to the sandy floor. Its great thorny arms crumble in the crash. The creatures that lived up high must find other homes, but those who prefer to live down low move right in. A millipede, a scorpion, and many ants and termites quickly find homes in the toppled hotel. After many months, all that remains are the wooden ribs that supported the cactus while it stood so tall. A collared lizard dashes over the top looking for insects. A ground snake huddles in the shade below.
and all around there is a forest of cacti slowly, slowly growing in the desert. Through hot and cold, wet and dry, some will survive long enough to become other cactus hotels. The End That book was called Cactus Hotel by Brenda Z. Goyberson, illustrated by Megan Lloyd. When I first read that book, I didn't know that cacti could live that long and how important they were to the desert, but it was really cool to read all about it. If you want to read more about animals that live in the desert, here's a list of some books that you might like to check out from the library. Good Night Little One by Margaret Wise Brown and illustrated by Rebecca Elliott is a bedtime story about animals and children that are just about ready to get tucked into bed. If you loved Goodnight Moon and other similar stories, you'll like this one. Follow Turtles from the Blossoms of Spring to Cold Wintry Days in Turtle Walk by Matt Phelan. A family of turtles is on the move, but where are they going? Look out for the surprise at the end of the story. In Little Green Donkey by Anuska Alipos, a little donkey loves eating grass more than anything else. Little Donkey eats so much grass that all of a sudden, Little Donkey turns green. What will happen when Little Donkey tries the other foods? Find out in this story. Thanks everybody for joining us today. We're so glad that you were here. Remember that reading out loud with somebody or by yourself still counts as reading. And when you fill out your summer reading logs, you can count this time in that reading log too. We hope to see you next week, friends. Bye everybody.